Hey, Justin here from Veruzo Photography. I want to take a moment to talk a little bit about the touch bar on the MacBook Pro laptops by Apple. I was cruising through YouTube and I found there were a lot of videos that had reviews of the laptop from a year ago, which means that most of the people using them at that time had only been using it for maybe a few weeks before they did the review. So I wanted to give a long-term perspective of the touch bar. And the biggest question is, is it worth it? Is it worth spending the extra money to get a touch bar on the MacBook Pro? And the answer is really not all that easy. I've had mine a uh, 13 inch uh, touch bar version of the MacBook Pro. I've had it for about six or seven months now. And in all honesty, I use my laptop maybe 15, 20% of the time. Uh, during the day, I use a Mac mini with a uh, wired keyboard. At home, I use my iMac here with the wireless keyboard neither of which are available with a touch bar. The first thing to look at is if you go to Apple's website as of right now in 2018, you'll see that you basically have three options moving from the base model up to the touch bar. Uh, and then you have options beyond that. But uh, what I'd like to do is compare the 256 gig MacBook Pro to the 256 gig MacBook Pro with touch bar. Uh, because that's more of a reasonable comparison. Of course, if you're looking to save money, you can get the 128 gig version, uh, which you cannot get with a touch bar. So to try to keep it uh, apples to apples, if you look at the two models, uh, there's a couple differences other than the touch bar, which you do have to take into consideration in terms of the additional $300 premium that you're paying to get that touch bar. One of those is the processor. Uh, if you look closely, you'll see that the 256 gig uh, base model comes with a 2.3 gig i5 processor, while when you get the touch bar, you actually bump up to a 3.1 gig i5 processor. So you do get a little bit of a processor boost. One of the other things you get is two extra Thunderbolt ports, uh, USB-C ports, sorry. Uh, there's four of them all together, and I, I don't know if it's something I'll ever need four ports, uh, but if you have a lot of peripherals and you have a, a, a need for that, then you have to also factor in what's the value to have those two additional USB-C ports. One of the other features of the touch bar itself is a touch ID sensor. Uh, from a security perspective, this might be uh, convenient and it might have some level of value even if you were to never use the touch bar itself. If you just use it for Touch ID, uh, it may be worth it to you. Uh, it works really well. It's a fast scanner. Uh, it's an accurate scanner and I love it. It's great. However, one caveat is that now that the Apple Watch unlocks the MacBook Pro, it almost kind of defeats the purpose of the uh, Touch ID scanner in terms of unlocking the computer. Of course, for purchases, it's still useful, uh, but just one thing to consider, if you have an Apple Watch, you really don't need the Touch ID to unlock your MacBook. So I'd quickly like to go over some of the pros uh, that I have found using the Touch Bar over the past six months. Uh, obviously, the biggest benefit is the fact that you can have quick links to a lot of useful features that you would normally have to possibly click through a few menus to get to. Uh, I use Word a lot, and in Word, it's great to have the formatting tools right there, front and center, if you want to bold, italic, underline, change the font, all of that is right in the touch bar, which makes it super convenient. I don't do a lot of editing, uh, either with photo or videos on the MacBook Pro. I'm just, I'm, I'm a at home type of person. Uh, I edit at home, I'm not on the road a lot. Uh, so I, it's just much more convenient to edit on a huge 27 inch screen than a small 13 inch screen. Uh, and in honesty, if I was editing a lot on the road, I would absolutely get a 15 inch instead of the 13 inch. So I can just see better what I'm doing. One thing I love about the touch bar is that it's also customizable. So if there's functions that you're used to or that you use often, which I do, for example, show all applications uh, is something I use all the time. And I love that I can put that as a quick link right at the top and it's always there, it's always active. I don't have to click any additional keystrokes to get to that function. And that was one of the things I was concerned about when I went to the touch bar is if, if I would lose that or if I'd have to now add an additional step to do things that I normally would do in one click. In Safari, you do get the option to have your favorites in the touch bar, which is kind of convenient. If you jump to certain pages back and forth often, it's really nice and it's crisp and a clean display. Uh, you, you, it doesn't feel 
when you look at it like you're looking at a screen it just it, i don't even know how to describe it it looks really cool so i will give apple that it they did a great job on the functionality and the implementation of that touch bar within the keyboard it really is seamless it's instant it's uh it, it's crisp and more importantly it's really easy to see in just about any light uh, if you can see your screen you can see the touch bar so i want to talk about a few of the problems with the touch bar the first issue is that it's just difficult to get used to. Uh, I don't look down at the keyboards. I've been typing forever. I type really fast. I never look down. Uh, and I don't have it in my muscle memory to touch the touch bar uh, to go to quick links. And part of the reason that that's an issue is because it's not available on the desktop and it's not available on any type of wireless keyboard. The MacBook Pro is the only product that Apple makes that has that touch bar. That makes it increasingly more difficult for someone who uses systems that span their ecosystem from the phone, iPad, the iMac, uh, and the MacBook Pro. You're just never gonna get used to it if you're using all these devices. I would love to see if they made a wireless keyboard for the iMac with the touch, uh, touch bar. That would be great, and that would allow uh, that consistency where you would be using it all the time and you get used to it and uh, you use it more often than not. So one thing I find is even though I have links in the touch bar, I'm so accustomed and so used to clicking things that I tend to forget that it's even there a lot of the time. And for $300, I'm probably not using it as often as I should. So I guess where the touch bar really shines, and I don't use Final Cut Pro, I use a Premiere. Uh, Premiere does have touch bar functionality now, uh, and I know that people loved it for uh, scrubbing videos, and uh, there's just a lot of quick links that you can put in uh, within Premiere or within Final Cut Pro. Uh, now, here's the caveat with that, is if I was editing video on my MacBook Pro, for me, speed would mean everything. And for $300, if you forego the touch bar, you can upgrade the model below it up to an i7 processor. And that is gonna make a huge difference in how fast you're able to render out your projects. Uh, it, it just seems to me like a no-brainer that if you are doing video editing, it is not worth buying the touch bar. You're much better off getting the model lower for $14.99, add the $300 option to upgrade to the i7 processor, and you're gonna have a much better video editing machine. One of the other drawbacks is there's actually a, a few instances where accessing something now takes an extra keystroke, uh, particularly a function key. Uh, if you need to access the function key, you now have to press a button to bring up the function keys in the touch bar and then touch the corresponding function key. I know it's a little thing, but it's a, it's a give or take. You're going to add a little extra step in something that you may use frequently, and you're going to save a, t uh, save a step on something else you may use frequently. Uh, so it's just something to consider that there are instances where the touch bar is not going to have the function that you need at that moment, and you're going to have to do something to make it appear so you can execute that command. So the bottom line, would I recommend someone spend the money to get the touch bar? Honestly, probably not. There's not a lot of instances where it's a super time saver. Uh, if you have money to spend and you don't care and you just want a cool feature, uh, go for it. I mean, as I said, the implementation is great. The functionality is rock solid. Uh, the touch ID sensor is amazing. Those are all great features, but for me, I just don't use it enough to justify the extra money. And I do kind of regret that I didn't scale back and go for something with the i7 processor, uh, which would have given me uh, faster processing for editing photos, for editing videos. Again, I don't do a lot of that, uh, but I do sometimes come across. Uh, touch bar might be good for uh, students that are in school uh, where speed is not really the ultimate concern. Uh, and if it's your only device, if you're gonna buy a MacBook Pro and that's your only computer and that's what you're gonna be using for the next four years of college, then you know what? Yeah, maybe spend the extra 300 bucks. You're gonna get the extra ports, you're gonna get the processor upgrade and you're gonna get the Touch ID uh, and you're gonna have some really convenient, uh, fast links and uh, access to functions commonly used in Word and Excel and even the calculator. I use the calculator app a lot and I love the Touch Bar adds uh, a lot of the common uh, uh, functions of the calculator into the Touch Bar, which makes it super easy. Hopefully you enjoyed this review of the Touch Bar. As I said, it's not really a review of the laptop or the MacBook Pro in general. I just really wanted to address what it's been like to use the Touch Bar for the past six months. Uh, if you enjoy the video, please subscribe. We'd love to have you on the channel. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them and I'll, I'll try to get back to you. But thanks for watching. Have a great day.